State of Exception. Uh, this is a lecture for the One School for All course by Andrew Thomas. I want you to watch this before the 28th of August. So the idea of this is to give you a little bit of help in um, in reading the Agamben book State of Exception because there are some um, there are some historical backgrounds and some systems that I kind of think he assumes um, when he writes the book. He kind of assumes that you know a, a fair amount about the State of Exception. So this will um, give you a bit of background to help you. Also, we'll be using this um, this concept state of exception to analyze education law but that's not in the book and it's not going to be in the lecture this lecture here we're going to have to do that in class okay because we once we understand states of exceptions we can use it to we can use it to understand laws so let's do some historical background. Um, state of exception is as old as uh, as the hills. Uh, it's certainly as old as European civilization so we go we go back to antiquity to explain it. Um, and um, and that means the Greek 400s um, for this uh, for this case. Those of you who've seen the movie 300 know that the Greeks um, struggled with, or especially Sparta struggled with um, with Persia in that film. Um, after the Persian Wars between um, Greece and Persia, um, Athens and Sparta had it out as to who were the um, who were to gain hegemony over the in Greek islands and the Greek area. Um, and uh, spoiler alert: Sparta wins. Um, but one of the things that this uh, this Peloponnesian War, is what we call it, um, um, showed us was the um, the effectiveness of different forms of government in making war. And it turned out that um, Athenian democracy was was supremely ineffective in many ways at making war because um, it used these assemblies, these civil rights, and the uh, and the courts. Um, Whilst whilst actually having to make snap decisions about strategic issues, the, the classic example of this is um, is the is about the main general Alcibiades. Now the the assembly had had voted on an attack on um, on Syracuse in Sicily, so Alcibiades, um, being being the big general at the time, um, a very young but um, but very talented general, he um, he made the journey to Sicily, and um, and whilst he was away. He was also subpoenaed, so he had to go back and face trial for some of the things that he was doing. It had actually been um, the, the the trial had or the case had started up before he went, but he was given their green light to go ahead. But instead of them protecting him from from judicial appeal, um, they um, they called him back to face and face the charges, which was disastrous for um, for the military campaign. Um, Alcibiades actually defected, so he just disappeared, so the, the trial didn't um, happen. Um, but the Athenians, who were left over in Syracuse, were without that general. Now, there was another general, but he just wasn't quite so good. So the, um, he, he didn't do quite so good in German, and in the end, had to come back to Athens. Um, the point is not how great Alcibiades was. He was a bit of an idiot. Uh, not an idiot, he was just morally reprehensible. But... Um, but um, the point is that um, a democracy turned out to be a really bad way of making snap military decisions. It strikes uh, it struck everybody at the time, but um, really, if you're going to make military strategic decisions, then you need a small group of people that can affect, um, act effectively, gain, get information, and make um, good decisions pretty quickly. That will then not be challenged by anybody else. Today, in actual fact, we're kind of going back on this because a lot of parliaments are actually being um, asking to um, to approve military action. Okay, the next example is from Cincinnatus 458 in Rome. Cincinnatus was a Roman citizen, and famously, he um, when there was a military crisis in Rome, Cincinnatus was asked to become the dictator. Dictator means basically he had absolute power. That's where we get the modern word dictator. It's, it's a Latin word originally, um, but he had um, special powers purely for the sake of solving this particular crisis. So um, Cincinnatus, who was plowing in his field, was asked to do this. He goes off. Uh, he recruits enough soldiers and um, and uses his special powers to um, do everything he needs to do in order to solve the military crisis and then returns to the field. And that's why Cincinnatus was such a hero. Um, it's because not just that did he solve the problem, but he did not retain his dictatorial powers. And we know that afterwards that was not always the case. Some people would, once they've got those powers, like to keep them for as long as they can. So, um, so it's it's a really interesting um, figure, a very interesting story. If you've not heard about it before, by all means, Google it. Um, I've got I used um, I recommend Encyclopedia Britannica, but there are loads of other ways of, of finding out more about about this guy. Essentially, what we're doing is we're finding a um, 
a, a model here. Um, first of all, there's a crisis. There's this emergency you talk about. And then there's these special powers, lots of rules that generally um, generally work for, for um, democracies. You can break them as long as there is a crisis going on, as long as you can declare a state of emergency. But then that state of emergency has to have established limits. And that is the model. Crisis, break rules, be a dictator, abandon democracy for a short period of time. But there are limits, and as soon as those limits occur, you have to go back to plowing your field like Cincinnatus. There are different ways of dealing with this in the European democracies. There are questions to be asked that will be asked and answered in different ways. So, for example, um, should there be rules for the degrees of power, the de degrees of states of emergency? And, um, and that will, um, in, in modern times, um, perhaps go along with the states of crisis. Are we in red alert at the moment or are we just in green? Um, who is it that can declare a state of emergency and what do they need to prove in order to in order to declare it or can they just declare it um without any justification how long may the states of emergency last and are the rules set at the time during the declaration or are the rules that, or the special powers that they get or are they established by law beforehand there are lots of different answers to these questions but essentially everyone has the same kind of system uh, they call it different things. So in France, for example, a state of emergency is the term. Um, a lot of countries call it state of emergency. The German tradition is state of exception. And that's what it's called in Norway as well. Um, you could also um, argue that martial law, when it's applied um, to situations which aren't obviously warfare, um, is also a kind of state of exception. It gives people special power. The, the rules, you can break rules um, in the battlefield that you can't obviously break just on the street at home. But also terror legislation. Today, um, people are using terror legislation to break all kinds of really important um, democratic rules like um, habeas corpus. You know, the idea that nobody can just arrest you without charging you uh, for more than a very short period of time. Under terror legislation, you can arrest people without charging them for, for days and days and days. And, um, and that's simply not OK. Similarly, uh, using soldiers on the street um, is something that the democratic uh, revolutionaries in, in early modernity campaigned against, but we see it happening under the state of emergency. Famously today in France, the state of France has been in a state of emergency for about two years now, following the Charlie Hebdo attacks. Um, and, um, and Macron has, has promised to, to stop this, but he actually, the first, one of the first things he did as president was to extend the state of emergency. And that's why there are so many soldiers on the street in Paris today. If you um, have visited Paris since uh, 2015, you might have noticed this. Um, and um, more recently, this year, in fact, Amnesty released a report um, claiming that the state of emergency rules are being used to keep down peaceful protests. So there's this problem, there's this, um, there's this little um, issue if state of emergency doesn't have proper limits, then it actually can make incursions on our dem democratic rights. So I tried to explain to you um, what a state of emergency is um, and why it's um, politically problematic and where it comes from. Essentially, there's this little seed of uh, a little kernel of, um, of totalitarianism within all our dem democratic systems. And, um, and it has the potential to go, to go wild. Um, it's meant to have these limitations, but we see that when these limitations are stretched, then societies begin to look more and more like totalitarian societies. Um, we're not meant to be living on a battlefield. That's not the way things are. So, um, so that so that's the um, the system, and Agamben will actually claim, um, along with the uh, juridical um, thinker Carl Schmitt, um, that um, dictatorship is um, is not to be found just in who is elected to a country. Dictatorship is in the hands of whoever it is that can declare a state of emergency.